Hi! Today I will be doing something really fun. And coincidentally, it involves drawing the same thing multiple times again. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I don't know. But anyway, I thought it would be nice to see how small I can draw. I will start with my usual A5 size and then I'll do half of it and then half of that and so on until I can't go any smaller. So let's do it! The subject of today's drawings will be my cat. Yep, we got ourselves a kitten. Her name is Boney, that's B-O-N-N-Y, and we've had her for about a month. The name is from a female pirate and Bonnie, and that's because she only sees through one eye. But she's fine otherwise, and she is baby. I will show a video of her later on today. Now back to the drawing. So right away when coloring I made a mistake of wetting the paper. I thought it would allow the paint to spread evenly, which wasn't the case. The paper buckled and the color just didn't sit right on the paper. I'm still figuring out how I want to paint with watercolors, so that's okay and it allowed me not to make the same mistake with the other drawings. I also had troubles deciding how I wanted to shade it, I think because she has black fur and it's harder to do versus other colors, but in the end I am satisfied with how I did it. I also did the line art after that first wash of color because I couldn't really see her face already and I was afraid that as I'm shading darker and darker it would just keep getting worse. Doing that though I was scared that the ink would smudge, which thankfully it didn't. And just to clarify, she does have the other eye, I just prefer drawing it closed as it's already like half closed and smaller than the other one and most of the time I don't even notice that it's there. So this first drawing was the most important in establishing how all the other ones will look like. I mean the line art, how I shade the fur, etc. So that was the most stressful one and also because it was the biggest so it's the least forgiving when it comes to detail. And here is the first finished painting. Next up we got the half of the previous size, so A6. And I think the biggest challenge with this, well, challenge is drawing the sketch the same every time, with the same proportions and the same face expression, etc. And I can't do my usual thing here where I just copy my digital sketch because that's kind of cheating especially with the smaller sizes, but I think this sketch came out pretty good still. And this time I did the liner first because I learned my lesson. And for this one and the previous one I used a size 05 pen. I usually use 03 pens, but I figured since I'm gonna do much smaller drawings later on, I should start with a thicker pen for keeping the proportions. Here I did also use the O3 pen for some things like the eye and whiskers. In 
general, this size was still comfortable for me to draw. I've drawn things of similar size before, so I kinda keep these two as a control group for the later ones. And as for the shading, I could include a fair amount of detail still, though I did notice that the face was a little harder to do. And same goes for the white pen. And here it is finished. Next we have the A7 size, so we're already going into the too small to be comfortable to draw area. And yeah, my problems already started with the sketch, where I kinda had troubles with the proportions. The head looked too big to me. I did make it work in the end, but it's still kinda weirdly shaped. And here I already was using a smaller pen, the O3. And I had the most issues with her face. The mouth came out wonky and the placement of the eye isn't ideal. Going into the watercolors, the bigger brush was fine for the initial wash, but then I had to pick up a smaller one to do the rest. And here I already felt like I couldn't really do too much detail, especially on the face. And here is the third finished drawing. This fourth drawing is a 8 size and this rip. And this is really where I started to feel the paper size wasn't enough. It was like between doable and challenging, which was weird, but at least you can still see the facial features, so that was nice. Maybe right now I should say where I got this idea from, since apparently I'm running out of things to say. I mean, there's only so long that you can talk about the same thing. So, I just basically stole this idea from Casey Golden. I believe she actually came up with this challenge and I thought it was really cool. I usually do prefer working on smaller surfaces, like I don't normally go bigger than A5 and A4 is really rare for me. So I thought, hey, I should definitely try it and see how small I can go and still keep the art look nice. And well, I think we found the answer, this. This is where it starts looking bad. I mean, to be fair, if I drew something simpler, more cartoony and like cell shaded, it would still probably look alright, but well, I didn't draw anything simpler. And here it is finished. This next drawing is size A9, which doesn't even sound like a real size anymore, but it's about 4 by 5 centimeters. And side note, I wanted to keep the camera at the same distance for all of the drawings, but then I realized it wouldn't be a very good idea. You wouldn't be able to see much and also my palette is a good indicator of the scale too. So I did zoom in the camera after all. So even though this drawing was tiny, I actually like it. I think the size is perfect for like a cute illustration and it being so small made me draw it in a more cutesy way, if that makes sense. It was honestly surprising and I like it more than the previous one.
The next one is about two and a half by four centimeters and I used a smaller pen, a 01 size. The sketch and line art still weren't super bad to draw, but the painting was kind of challenging. It's not a big brush, but it felt huge on this piece. And I don't have a smaller round brush, so I was not looking forward to the even smaller paintings. I also decided I wouldn't be using a white pen moving forward with these drawings because it just looks like a white blob here. It's too thick. The next drawing, even though twice as small, was not as cute anymore, I think. There's this threshold of smaller equals cuter and I think we reached it. And like I feared, the brush was way too big already, but we're not quite done yet because... Yep, we have an even smaller drawing, measuring two by one and a half centimeters. You can barely see what's going on on the face. Yeah, it was getting a little ridiculous, but still kind of doable. And here is a close-up of it. For the next one, the one by one and a half centimeters, I used a 005 pen. And for the back legs, I decided to just draw them with the pen like a thicker shadow kinda. And I must say that drawing these tiny pieces reminded me of Willard Wiggins' micro sculptures. I saw them in Niagara Falls Ripley's Believe It or Not, and you had to look at them through a magnifying glass. It was truly amazing. And I struggled with a mere 0.7 by 1 centimeter, which is our last drawing for today. I mean, it's so small you can't even see her face. And honestly, shading was mostly just random blobs on this one. So I decided that this would be the last one. There was no point going any smaller, it would only get worse. And this drawing is number 10, so I didn't want to ruin the nice number, you know. So this is it, the finished final piece. Okay, so here are all of the finished drawings and I'm not gonna ask which do you like the most this time. But instead, how do you think I did with the progressively smaller and smaller pieces? And what is the smallest drawing that you did? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!